Hey guys, welcome to the third video of the project Stained Glass Wonders um, where I show you how to watercolor your background and then how to print your stained glass windows on top of your uh, abstract watercolor design. Before we get into the actual process, I wanted to kind of show you and explain to you uh, the title process of of printing and and why it's that way. So with with printing, usually you have more than one traditionally because you can print multiple after multiple after multiple. And um, and here I have an example of one. This probably looks familiar to you if you're in my classroom. Um, this hangs behind my desk. It is of a big cat hiding in the weeds. This uh, is not part of the edition. This was a practice. I practiced before I started actually creating the finals because I wanted to see if I was was happy with the design. And I was. Here is here is the actual wood block that I used. Uh, you can see the cat in there. It is the reverse though. Um, and it is actually wood carved with uh, wood carving tools. And uh, so that's the actual block. But here is one that is actually part of the set. And you can tell that because in the lower left hand corner, it has four over 20. So this is the fourth print out of 20 that are in the edition. And then in the lower right hand corner is the signature of the artist. And then down in the middle of the piece is where the title goes. There's no title on this one just because I left it untitled, but traditionally it goes um, right in the middle on the bottom. Um, it's done in pencil. Traditionally it's done in pencil just because uh, it's harder to copy and forge or um, graphically enhance it and and make it fake because if this was or ever was to become a lot of money um, or worth a lot of money uh, then maybe someone would try to duplicate it or copy it and so therefore um, the rule is always always do it in pencil so yeah so here we go on to how to paint and print all right guys now it's time to start painting and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing a generous amount of watercolor onto the middle of our papers, which will hopefully align the color into the same area of our cork stamp um, so that it aligns up with our rose window. Things that we need is watercolor, um, bucket of water, and, uh, and the secret tool, which is a straw. With this particular design, I've decided to go with a cool color scheme. So purple, blue, green. And I'm going to start off by adding a generous amount of purple. Again, this is, uh, this is a part of the piece in which we kind of lose control. You can't be too picky with it. Um, I do advise you to uh, have control on kind of where you're adding your uh, splashes of color. Uh, continuously turning your page around to get the blow art to go in all different directions. And, um, and create some blending effects from one color to the other so don't be afraid to overlap like for example I just overlapped the blue with the purple so therefore it just kind of blends naturally together um, and it creates a nice transition from one color to the other again you can't be too picky you're just kind of letting it happen on its own
All right, so there is my final product with watercolor. As you can see where the color is, it's exactly where my rose window will be. And so now it's time to um, allow the watercolor to dry. And once the watercolor is dry, then I can print my cork stamp onto the paper. I've got some cookie sheets and that is what we'll be using to place down the ink and to roll the ink out. We want the ink to be rolled in a nice even consistency. Um, so um, rolling it in um, all directions is best. We don't want it to be too thick on the roller, but at the same time we definitely don't want it to be too thin. Once you have a nice amount on the roller, then you can take it and roll over your stamp. You can get about two rolls in and then you're gonna have to refill the roller. Um, I like to go up and down um, once on each side and then go side to side, making sure that I uh, roll over the entire stamp going in both directions. All right, a few things that you need to be aware of when printing onto your paper. For one, you really only get one chance at placing your paper onto the cork board. Because once it's placed down, then the ink is on it. And so therefore, if you lift up, or if you push it, or kind of like try to recenter it, or anything like that, um, then ink is going to get everywhere. Now the secret ancient tool for successful hand printing is a spoon. Now we're only going to be using plastic spoons. Traditionally, uh, it's done with a wooden spoon, and um, and what you do is you you use your 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 um, pointer finger and also your middle finger to apply a ton of pressure down, and you are working in small movements. Um, it's best in a small circular movement, uh, but the trick is making sure that you place down an equal amount of pressure over every square inch of surface where your paper is touching the cork board. This is going to guarantee you that that ink that is on the cork board is being transferred onto the paper. Once you feel like you have spooned every part of that paper, then all you have to do is carefully lift the paper straight up. And there's your print. As you can see I have some areas on mine that um, I didn't spoon, like the top portion. Um, you know, it's a good idea to practice before you do it on a final. So I would want to redo this one. But yeah, this is, this is the gist of the assignment. Again, you need four prints to make a full edition. And uh, again, all, like always, have fun and be creative.